Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Antje Grau, um, and I will be your host for this ETE podcast today. Um, we are extremely excited to have Dan Holland um, with us today, Associate Professor at the Hansen School of Business um, here at Utah State University. Um, and he is an absolute expert in teaching and teaching excellence with 13 years of teaching experience. Um, Dan, how are you today? I am doing really well. Thank you. End of the semester, it's feeling good. Fantastic. As many of you may know, uh, Dan's research centers on entrepreneurial decision making. Um, and today we will actually talk about a very entrepreneurial idea, um, as I would say, um, that Dan and a team of students and administrators have recently put into practice here um, at Utah State. Um, and it is called Learn Twice. Um, and we will soon hear what Learn Twice is all about. Um, but first, Dan, let me start here. Um, with a quote um, that I really like from Leonardo da Vinci. Um, and it says, learning is the only thing the mind never exhausts, never fears, and never regrets. Um, so Dan, what does learning mean to you? Ooh, I like that quote. I think uh, for me, learning is such an exciting part of life. And I think that's why many of us uh, uh, go into uh, teaching, isn't it? Uh, research and teaching, because we're we're in love with learning and we always want to be exposed to new things. And, and, uh, and to me, that's what learning is. It's gaining new knowledge, but it's also, it's also uh, understanding different perspectives. So it's having my perspectives challenged. And, and even if I don't change my mind, it's being able to understand what others are thinking or doing or understand how they're behaving. And, and so it's being able to see those perspectives and get a, a better view of how the world around me uh, uh, behaves or acts or responds. And, and I just love to uh, always uh, see that and feel that and be exposed to those new things. Right. Yeah, I really love how we emphasize those new exposures and different perspectives. And um, when I think about learning, um, I actually also feel like almost every day my students or my colleagues are really the ones who teach me so much about new perspectives um, on my professional, but also maybe my personal life. Um, and then what did you last learn or maybe learn twice? Yeah. So to teach is to learn twice. That's a, that's a quote that I've always loved. And uh um, and I love that about teaching because, like you said, I, I'm always learning from students or from colleagues or mm -hmm. that's, that's learning uh, content about my subject area that I'm supposed to be the uh, expert on. Right. Um, or maybe learning about teaching or other things. But, uh, uh, you know, if I think about what have I learned recently, uh, uh, just the other day, I uh, was grading a, a final exam or a final report that uh, a student group uh, submitted. And in that report, in this class, I have them do a simulation and uh, they run a business basically and have to make a, a bunch of decisions to run this business. And then they compete against others and it spits out uh, results and whatnot. And this particular group mentioned that uh, during this simulation, they failed to really pay attention to the the human resource decisions uh, where they had to make decisions about salary and and training and benefits and things like that. And they kind of ignored those decisions and it led to lower productivity during the simulation. And uh, and when they said that, I thought, well, why would they ignore that? And as I thought about it, I thought, you know what? I met with that group multiple times and I don't think I brought up those HR decisions, even though in my mind, that's a really important aspect of the simulation. I don't think I raised it. And so I didn't make them aware of it. And so I learned from that experience of, of how I may in my mind think that I'm emphasizing something, but I'm really not putting the proper emphasis on it. And I let that group down by not uh, mentoring them to look at those things a little bit closer. And so that was just one little example uh, that I learned, you know, just yesterday uh, while grading of how I can now tweak uh, my teaching in the future and think about that and say, okay, I need to pay more attention to every piece of this simulation and make sure that they understand how important every aspect is. And so I, I learned about the content of, yeah, the productivity is, is uh, related to these HR decisions. And I learned about teaching that 
okay, I need to figure out a better way to emphasize that and make sure that they're paying attention to it. And that happens over and over throughout a semester, right? Uh, every assignment I do, every time I grade it, I see, oh, they didn't quite capture what I was trying to do. And so I have to rethink about how I present to them. Or I learn something from them that I hadn't thought about, and it gives me a chance to, uh, again, teach future students a, a little bit better. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. That's really interesting. And I think learning twice and learning also from our students is so important for us as educators and as instructors. And the nice thing is that every semester or maybe even every week that we're teaching, we get the chance to, to do better and to build on what we have already learned and improve, which is ultimately what we expect from our students as well, especially if they perform simulations and do several rounds of them or assignments. So I really love that aspect that you highlight here. Um, so I guess we can definitely agree that learning twice is really crucial for us as educators. Um, so tell us a little bit about the idea um, behind the platform Learn Twice um, that you have created. Yeah, so as I was thinking about uh, ways that I could contribute to uh, the teaching side, both me personally and to my department and the college and the university, I thought about uh, kind of the different tasks that I get involved in and, and what I do to improve my own teaching. And some of those things are uh, finding new content to use in class. So I may go out and look for new uh, news stories that uh, makes it more real and relevant and timely. Or I may look for new video clips that I think will help teach a principal. Or I, I may look for new methods that I haven't uh, really tried before and experiment with those. And a lot of that takes a lot of time to really search for those things. Uh, um, sometimes it just happens in the natural everyday reading the news or whatever. But when I'm really trying to find something for a class, it takes a lot of time to go out and do that. And, and I thought, you know, I think we have a, a thousand faculty, you know, whatever number on campus, and they're all doing these same types of activities, looking for content, uh, trying to find new things to put in their classes, uh, uh, trying to find new ways of teaching and becoming more effective and sharing. And, uh, and is there a better way? There's so many great resources everywhere. Uh, we have a lot of great ones even on campus, right, with... Uh, uh, the city group and uh, with ETE and whatnot. Um, and uh, and uh, on, across the web, there's so many resources, but it is hard to find it sometimes and it takes a lot of time and effort. And so I just thought, is there something that we could do, uh, create a little team that uh, would help make uh, faculty more efficient and more effective in doing some of those things? Could we gather, maybe curate some of the material that's out there, find uh, best practices? Can we uh, find content that they may be able to use in class and, and come to a Learn Twice uh, site and uh, quickly find news stories or video clips or other materials uh, and whatnot? And so that's kind of how it started. And, and so I put out a survey to other faculty looking for different things that they would want and tried to get their feedback. And then, then we just decided to create this resource. resource. And I got a student team uh, to help work with me. Uh, students uh, are willing helpers and they're a lot cheaper than uh, faculty. And so yeah. they started doing a lot of those searches and trying to find content and uh, summarizing it and putting it out on the website. And, uh, and that's kind of how it all started. Uh, and uh, we just started experimenting with putting things out and then tried to get uh, feedback to find out what's working and what's not. Yeah, and, and that is wonderful. And I have to say, I'm, I'm at the business school myself. So, um, and as every one of us, um, I know how it feels like to find good content. And, and I mean, good content, suitable content, also quality content, because as you were saying, Dan, there's so much material out there. It is really, hard and it takes a lot of time to select the right resources that we want to use in our classroom and that we want to introduce our students to. Um, and just based on my personal experience, so I'm teaching digital marketing um, and sustainability marketing right now. Um, and those are two topics where it is extremely important to stay relevant and they are very new, they're ever changing. Um, and so it is really a challenge to find 
um, up-to-date material that is um, in very good quality and that I can use. So a platform like Learn Twice would be particularly important for me as well as I revamp my lectures, as I add new content to it, and as I am trying to stay up-to-date and relevant um, and new. Um, so this is awesome, and I, I really appreciate the effort that all your team put into, into this platform. Um, and what would you say why and, and when should um, instructors remember to really, really use the platform? And what is the additional extra added value that the platform could bring to their teaching? Yeah, yeah, you just mentioned a great one. Uh, um, you know, all the new things that, I mean, your field or what you teach in your class didn't even exist 10 years, 20 years ago, right? No. So it's always new, always changing, always evolving. Uh, new things to find. And and uh, if you're like me, this is just an example. I, I may, during the summer, maybe I'm watching a movie and uh, there's a little scene in the movie that uh, that I say, oh, that really teaches a principle really well. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I try to say, okay, uh, how do I remember to actually use that in a class? And I'll often email myself a little comment or write mm -hmm. it down in a notebook or do something like that. And then it usually gets lost or buried somewhere and I don't remember it. And so Learn Twice is a place that I can then submit that material there and I know it's in one place. And so, so we really encourage the community, get uh, faculty to submit uh, and let it be a repository for them. So when you do find content, go out and put it at Learn Twice and then you can easily go do a search there and find that content. And so as new things come up, new uh, things that you discover, throw them there and then when you're sitting down to really uh, uh, think about your course and create that uh, that next uh, lesson plan it gives you a chance to go and, and search that uh, and so I think it adds value in as a storage place for individual faculty members and then hopefully as more and more in the community add to it, we'll be able to curate and really find best practices, and and uh, and that will uh, rise to the top, right? Uh, uh, we'll be able to uh, uh, find uh, articles or research or or content that uh, a lot of people see value in it, and uh, and it allows us to be able to go there and trust that material a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're not there yet. It takes time to build that up. And, uh, and we're just trying to generate more and more content. And, and over time, hopefully, we'll figure out a way to best uh, rate that material and, and uh, add value that way. And then, and, and then I, I really want uh, faculty to be able to not only uh, help with content, but to, to be able to find out about uh, new ways of learning. And we've been in this COVID environment, uh, uh, sorry, new ways of teaching this COVID environment uh, for the last uh, uh, several months. And it's changed a lot about the way we teach. And so we put all sorts of great information out there about different tools and, and technologies that can be used in online teaching and different methods and ways to get uh, students engaged and so on and so forth. And, uh, and we've seen lots of material from all over about that. Uh, but again, hopefully we can gather it into one place and, uh, and really make it a, a simple search uh, for faculty to find that kind of material. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, I think that is an excellent idea. And as we have talked about previously, the platform gathers different materials that we can use in our lectures. Um, and so, of course, right now, from looking at the, the website and the Learn Twice platform, it started off by um, really being targeted to a business management marketing type of um, faculty um, and subjects that are being taught. Um, but of course, this is not um, where Dan is um, expecting to stop, I assume. Um, and then also, as Dan has mentioned here, um, it's not only about the actual content that can be used in such classes in the classroom, but also about um, content um, related to instructional methods, related to teaching tips, best cases, case studies, um, opinion pieces, which is really relevant to all um, of our faculty. Um, and um, then um, in terms of expanding the platform, getting more instructors involved, um, and potentially moving above and beyond the, the business um, marketing and management um, subject area, um, what would your dream and your vision be for Learn Twice um, over the next year to achieve? 
Yeah, thank you. It's, uh, you know, it, it did start as a kind of a conversation with my department head, and we decided to start it on the department level, which is marketing and strategy, like you said. And then we uh, quickly expanded to the business school because I felt uh, like there was an opportunity there to uh, really focus on business faculty. Uh, if, uh, if you're like me in my PhD program, I didn't get a lot of training on teaching. And so I thought uh, this might be a resource that we could focus on business faculty and, and help them learn how to teach. And, uh, and, uh, and, and I really had this goal of uh, moving beyond not only Utah State, but uh, you know, a broader community across the country and around the world. And then the next goal was to move beyond business school and, and see uh, how we can best develop this kind of uh, uh, environment ecosystem of, uh, of sharing knowledge and, uh, and making it more available. And, uh, and I don't know where that's going to end up, uh, uh, whether we uh, replicate different uh, kind of pieces of Learn Twice for different subject areas, or we combine into one and just have a, a, the search be more effective. I, I really don't know, honestly. But what I do want, or as you say, what's my dream? It's about growing this community. It's about in, improving sharing. It's about uh, experimenting. Like you, you started out, I teach entrepreneurship. And in entrepreneurship, uh, the first plan you make uh, to start a business uh, rarely ever uh, evolves and looks the way that you expected it to, right? It's about taking these little bets and trying things and experimenting and getting feedback and uh, and then pivoting or changing and and doing new things. And, and that's really what I want uh, with Learn Twice. It's about uh, inviting others to participate and then seeing where it goes. And so it could go in a lot of different directions. It may uh, cross uh, many different disciplines. It uh, uh, may uh, uh, focus on one particular area that provides the most value and uh, and we'll see where that ends up but uh, my dream for the next year or so is just to really expand the community and to gather more feedback and get more people sharing and then see where that value is created and and uh, so it's a really exciting project that way thank you Dan that is wonderful and and certainly very exciting and I really hope that this will come true and it will become something that we can all achieve together. Um, well, thank you, Dan, for being our guest today. And thank you to everyone um, for listening to our ETE podcast um, today. Um, if you like this episode, um, please tell us about it um, on our social media channels and follow us there for more updates um, around teaching excellence and upcoming podcasts and events as well. Thank you very much. Thank you.